Getting, continuing on a series on the statements of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. And so we'll read, the, uh, we'll read the passage in Mark chapter 2, verses 13 down through to verse 17. Mark chapter 2, 13. Through, I forgot to announce that tonight we have the open mic night. He didn't even look at me or throw anything in my way. But So we have service tonight here at 6. Service tonight, I almost failed, but uh, service tonight here at 6.30, so there'll be music and various ones will be, it's downstairs in the lower auditorium, and that's 6.30 tonight, so different ones bringing music and, and sharing and that. So 6.30 tonight, Sunday night service, all right. All right, and so Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through to verse 17. And he went forth again by the seaside and all the multitude resorted unto him and he taught them and he passed by and he saw Levi the son of Jesus sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him follow me and he arose and followed him and he and it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house Many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eating with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Let's read that again. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Father, we ask, O oh God, again, your blessing upon the reading and the hearing of thy word, Lord, amongst your people. We pray, God, your word would go forth with power and precision, that it would accomplish the things that you have set out for it to do. We pray, Lord God, you'd hide the preacher behind the cross of Calvary, and may the glory of God move amongst us today. May the unction of the Holy Spirit bring forth the prophetic word of what it is you want to speak in our hearts. Lord, we give this time to you and pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, everybody today is scared of sick people. I had a cold, nasty cold for a week, you know, from last Sunday. And uh, I've been um, wearing the masks, and un un unlike me, uh, but wearing masks in the stores and and, uh, and I got that sniffle and a cough, and you know when you cough or sneeze in a store, uh, people get a little further away from you, you know? You, you, you really uh, you attract, or you, you have that kind of uh, uh, repelling. It's not attraction, it's repelling of people, you know what? And they literally, they avoid you like the plague. Literally, I guess, in this case, like the plague. Uh, but imagine if you were to go to your doctor, and I'm sure you've all been to your doctor in the last little while, and you went to the doctor or to the emergency, and um, you were having some symptoms. You went there because you're sick. Isn't that why we go to the doctor? Because we have some problem. And you go to the doctor, and there's a sign on the door that was, the sign was on most churches <laughs> not too long ago. It says this. Uh, I put up a sign there. Not oh, the, Where's the sign? Uh, try the next one. Um, I, maybe, it, maybe I lost it, but it said, imagine a sign that says, please stay at home if you have any of the following symptoms. And uh, if you have been 
uh, through the list. They say it so fast, you know. You've been through the list, you know. Do you have fever, cough, tiredness, loss of appetite, smell, taste, or runny nose, sore throat, headaches, aches, pains, diarrhea, rash of skin, red or irritated eyes, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, confusion? Have you been in contact with any of the people with these past symptoms in the last seven days? Or have you traveled outside of Canada within the past 14 days? Yeah. And then it says, you know, of course, uh, come back when you're symptom free. Now, that is all right if it's the grocery store or uh, some kind of meeting. But imagine if that's your doctor's office. Imagine the doctor says, we don't want any sick people around here. Imagine if it's the emergency at the door of the hospital and, you know, please go home and come back when you're feeling fine. Does that make any sense? Well, you know, that's sometimes the way the church operates. You know, when you're, when you're up to it, when you're righteous, when you got your act together, then you can come to the church. That's not the way it works. That's certainly not the way that Jesus had it. And what confused the religious leaders of Jesus' day was that how could he sit with a guy like Levi, who became Matthew, of course, we know him as the writer of the Gospel of Matthew. How could you sit with guys like that and look at all the rebel that are all around this guy and you're in his house and you're eating at his table. I mean, don't you understand that he's a sinner? And sinners are sick and it's contagious and you have to stay away from those sinners. That's what the religious crowd of his day, they couldn't understand. They're, they're, they were stay away. And when you get your act together, then you can come and we'll have fellowship with you, maybe. And it was confusing to them. I mean, Jesus was attracting big crowds. And you know, you'd think that maybe they might be a little bit jealous, maybe, that these big crowds were, were coming to him. He was teaching wonderful truths. He was performing miracles. But the kind of people, oh, Lord, the kind of people that he was attracting were just not up to snuff according to the religious people. So they figured that they should give this guy some guidance. But they didn't go right to Jesus. They went to his boys. <laughs> they went to the, the disciples. And they shared their expertise with the disciples. And they said, man, your master, we, we like his teaching and the miracles are neat, but you know, he doesn't really under, he's new at this, Okay. He's just a new kid on the block. He's a novice, but we're experts, and you see, he's got to stay away from sinners. He's got to stay away from people like that because he's going to get a reputation. You know, he's not going to fit in with the rest of us. He's, these people are sick. And so they tried to use their diplomacy on the disciples. But you know, Jesus, he knew what their hearts were thinking. And to Jesus, he said, this makes perfect sense. When you think about it in the kingdom way, and when you think of Jesus, he considered himself a doctor, and he saw himself in the calling of a physician, and to him it made perfect sense that a doctor doesn't separate himself from sick people. In fact, isn't that what... The whole Hippocratic Oath is about, you know, being there for people in need, being there for the poor, being there for the lonely, being there for the sick, being there for those that are broken. So it made perfect sense to him. Didn't make perfect sense in the religious mind, but it did in Jesus' mind. You ever been on a plane or a train and somebody at the steward announces, is there a doctor on board? Now, what does that mean? It means likely somebody is in need. We're looking for a doctor. Is there a doctor in the house? Somebody's in need, and we're calling forth a physician to come and minister to help this person. Now, if they said and instead, does someone here fly a 747? <laughs> now, that's a different crisis. <laughs> you know, there's something wrong up front. 
But, you know, if they say, if there's a, is there a doctor on board? Some, you know that somebody's in distress because that's what a doctor is all about. Who needs a doctor? Who here needs a doctor? I mean, we all need doctors from time to time. I mean, in this, this provincial election that we're in, health care costs and promises of health care additions is the biggest part of any budget, far more than roads or anything else like that. You know this? A hundred percent of people in the province of Ontario will likely need a doctor at some point in their life. And a hundred percent of people in this province will die, even with doctors, even with hospitals, even with medicine. A hundred percent will die. Some of them make it to a hundred and three, like Russ. <laughs> Russ Thompson, still in his own home, was going to put a garden in this year, but maybe didn't get around to putting the garden in. He's 103 years old. But eventually, we all succumb in this world. Aren't you glad there's a doctor in the house when you need him? Aren't you glad that Jesus is the great physician? He's now as near, the sympathizing Jesus. Aren't you glad that there's somebody on board with you who can minister to your needs who can take care of you, that when you, find, when you have a problem in your life and nobody else can fix it because they're just not capable of fixing it, that there's somebody trained in the area of your need on board, amen? Aren't you glad that Jesus is in the house here this morning? Praise be to God. Because it says we're two or three to gather. There, are, there he is in the midst of us. We can call on him. We can ask him. In fact, Jesus, Jesus is a specialist. And what is his speciality? Well, he's a cardiologist, <laughs> a heart doctor, amen. He knows what is the heart. He's used to doing open heart surgery, which is providential because the number one problem in our society is a heart problem. And I'm not talking about physically. Yes, cardiovascular health is one of the big things that takes people down. But I'm talking about spiritually. Spiritual death is a result of, 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 of a heart problem, a spiritual heart problem. I mean, you can try to prevent it through uh, the physical heart problems. You can try to prevent them through a healthy diet, exercise, good choices, but it'll eventually get every one of us, maybe because of genetic mutations, maybe because of genetic things. Well, spiritually, it's the same thing. You know, you can try to avoid it for a while on your own with good works, but I tell you what, there's a genetic problem. It's called sin. My daddy was a sinner. My granddaddy was a sinner. My great-granddaddy was a sinner. My great-great-granddaddy was a sinner. And it goes right back to great-great-granddaddy Adam. And sin has been following down that line ever since, and ever since there, we have all in this family of mankind have needed to have a specialist. We've needed a cardiologist in the house. We need somebody that specializes in heart surgery. And thanks be to God that the Father sent his son as a heart specialist for us all. So as hard as you may have tried to avoid cardiac arrest, someday it'll come knocking at your door. Isn't it glad that the rescuer of our souls is also our surgeon? You know, in, in Canamore, B.C., last year, maybe it was two years ago now, I think it was two years ago, in, Can in um, oh, I'm not going to tell that story. I'm going to tell a different story. <laughs> in, uh, in South Carolina, uh, the police found an unusual scene. That's this week, May the, the 12th. Anthony McKinnon, 60, you may have seen this on the news, murdered his girlfriend, 60 years old buried her body in the backyard. Now, where does the story come into the sermon? Well, when he got halfway through filling in the hole, he had a massive heart attack. It was too much work for him. And he crawled out into the front yard, and then, and he died, and the neighbors seen him, and they came over, and they tried to do CPR on him, and, and then they called the police, and they came, but they pronounced him dead. When they started looking around, they found the shovel, they found the trail. They found the girlfriend. Well, what I'm trying to say in this is, you know what? 
The scripture says, he that tried to cover his sin will not prosper. <laughs> he tried to cover up his sin. You know, we, we try our best to hide it, but you know what? It catches up with us. Sin will kill us every time. Sin will expose us every time. We may think that we get away with it. We may think we're in perfect of health spiritually, but I tell you what, if there is sin, it will, it will be uncovered. It will be revealed. And that may seem like a dramatic example of not getting away with covering up one's sin, but it's a poignant one. The earlier we get the problem diagnosed, the sooner we can get the doctor to treat us. The sooner we recognize that we're sinners, the sooner that we can recognize that we're in need, the sooner that we can recognize that we have a problem is the sooner that we'll address it. This is one of the great tragedies of COVID-19. People have been staying away from their doctors. Their aches, their pains, their issues, their stuff. They thought, well, I can't go. The doctor's closed. It'll be an online thing. I'll have to wait. And there are many, many more people that are coming with cancer and heart disease and stuff because now they're getting looked at and they hadn't got looked at over the years. They kind of put it off. They put it off. Well, maybe it's just nothing. I, I don't think I'll bother the doctor with it. Well, you know, it turned out to be something that was serious. The earlier we get diagnosis, the earlier we recognize that we're sin, we have sin going right back to Adam, that it's inbred in us and we need to deal with it, the better we'll be able to deal with it because we'll get to the right doctor. We'll get the right treatment. My wife went into the hospital some time ago and, and uh, she had terrible pain in her shoulder and whatnot and, and just said it was a muscle problem. You know, got the wrong doctor. <laughs> Came back last week and, or two weeks ago now, is it? You know, just the pain, the pain, the pain, and went into the doctor's, uh, went into the emergency, and this doctor took x-rays and said, you got a fractured shoulder. You have a dislocated and fractured shoulder. You need to see a surgeon. And now, now she's, now she is, uh, this week, going to see the surgeon. And so, you know, getting the right doctor means a big deal, right? Just, oh, it's just a muscle pain. Go home and rub stuff on it. Well, I was rubbing a gallon of that A535 into her back, into her shoulder, not realizing that it was a fractured shoulder and she was in terrible pain and I was rubbing it in, trying to make those muscles work. And you know what, I was just torturing my poor wife because we had the wrong doctor. Get the right doctor, friends. Get the right the diagnosis. The diagnosis with man's problems, oh, there is all kinds of consultants who will tell you what the problem is. Every party that's out there that's running says, oh, this is the, we'll fix it for you. Vote for us. But they have the wrong diagnosis, friends. The diagnosis is sin. And, the, and, the, and the, the cure is repentance. And Jesus came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Get the diagnosis. Tell people the diagnosis. Get the right doctor. That's what you need. What the religious people didn't realize was that they were at a disadvantage because they were just as much a sinner as the tax collector that they were complaining about. They were just as much a sinner as anyone else was. But they referred to those people that weren't in the synagogue or weren't in the church or weren't of a certain class or kind. They referred to them as sinners and they referred to themselves as righteous. Well, Jesus said, well, I'll play along with you. I've come not for the righteous, but the sinners come to repentance. The doctor has come for the sick. But if they only realized that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. This is a condition that affects all humanity. You see, someone who knows they're a sinner is more open to calling the doctor than someone who feels just fine. That's why Johnny asked for prayer this morning. Johnny knows he needs God. He's in a good place. Because there are those that may be walking into a church today that feel they're doing pretty good. But they're just a matter of time away from a cardiac arrest. <laughs> they need the doctor just as much. Jesus said, they are a whole who need not the physician. The word whole is a loaded one. To be able to overcome, it means to be fit. To be perfectly healthy, so that you so healthy that you can complete the task in front of you. In other words, to be whole means you got it made. 
you were in perfect health. You know, some of us think we're in perfect health because we don't have any things, but you know what? There was a guy, young man, went to sign up for the military, went through the medical, he wanted to be an Air Force pilot. He went through the medical situation, of course, and the doctor there said, son, I'm sorry, but you failed the medical exam. He says, well, I'm in perfect, I feel fine, I feel perfect, yes, son, but you know, he said, you're overweight, you require eyeglasses, you have a heart murmur, you've got diabetes, and your IQ is before, below the level that we require for an Air Force pilot. But I feel absolutely fine. You may feel fine, but you're not up to the job. A lot of preachers today are doing nothing more than positive thinking life coaches. Positive thinking life coaches. Trying to get broken, wounded, bleeding, sinful people to think better of themselves. Isn't that dumb? You come into the doctor. That's like that doctor came in. My wife says, oh, I got this terrible pain. Oh, just, just a muscle problem. Rub some stuff onto it. And so they rub and they rub and they rub, but it doesn't heal a fracture. You can rub. If you got cancer, you can rub all day. It doesn't do anything. You need the right diagnosis. And too many preachers are just trying to be self-help gurus. Here's seven steps to do this. Here's five points to do that. Here's three ways you can do this to feel better about yourself. You're a winner! Well, if you haven't repented of your sin, friend, you're a loser! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, maybe I have to edit that. <laughs> you know, I'm, try I'm not trying to bring you down. I'm just trying to bring truth. People need to hear the truth. You know, when you come to the doctor, you don't want a doctor that butters you up, do you? You want a doctor that tells you the truth. Hey, you're sitting there with a doctor. This is what I say. Tell it to me straight, doc. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Well, you know, you know, you're, you're really, a, you look pretty good for your age and whatnot. You know, you're doing all, you, you know, no, tell me what's wrong with me. I came in here to ask you a question. Oh, you're going to, I think you're going to live for a long time. And I think that, but, but what does the results of the test say? Doc, tell it, give it to me straight. You don't want a doctor that just tries to make you feel good about yourself. How long do I got, doc? How long do I got? Jesus, the great physician, says today is the day of salvation. I'm not going to give you tomorrow or the next day or six months from now. You get right now, and then we'll talk. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a day. Imagine, I'm not going to say, oh, well, you got six more months to live or a year to live or whatever else. No, today is the day of salvation. You better do business with God today because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We pray for traveling mercies to our folks getting back to St. Thomas. We hope you get there. <laughs> but you know, we, have, we, we can pray for things and pray for stuff. And I give you a whole list of things that we're doing this summer. I, oh, I'm preaching here, 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 doing all these kind of things. I don't know. Because there's an old saying we used to say in the church, God willing. Remember we used to say that? God willing. God willing. But today is the day to deal with God. Today is the day to deal with that sin. Today is the day to deal with the doctor's diagnosis. Jesus is calling them to repentance. I, uh, I feel sorry for you if you have a modern translation of the Bible. Because like many modern translations, they leave out the word repentance in this text of Scripture. They, they like to take out the word the blood and they like to take out repentance. Now, I'm not going to preach an old King James blah, blah, blah. You know, you've got to have that. But, you know, here, I, I, this is the one I like. <laughs> you know, I've not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. In many modern translations, they leave off to repentance. Repentance is pretty important, friends, because it's, only, it's one thing to get diagnosed. It's another thing to get surgery done. And without surgery, you're cooked. You know, Jesus does house calls, amen, if you let him into your house. He'll, he'll come and he'll, he'll make you righteous. He'll do a heart transplant.
transplant. He'll do a work of sanctification on you if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, he'll do a work on you and change your heart. Righteous is a condition that requires a heart change. Holiness is the result of that condition being effective. Holiness isn't doing the right thing to become righteous. The Bible actually says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. In fact, if you wrap your wound in filthy rags, guess what happens? You get more infection. One author has said this, holiness is being so affected by love that you don't, cons- don't even consider doing what's wrong. That's what sanctification is, friend. There's no desire to do anything that is evil or wrong. God commanded his people to be holy even as he is holy. And God would never consider doing anything that is evil. And he would never consider asking us to do or be something that we were not able to do or be. Some think it's an impossible task for humans to achieve. However, it really isn't impossible. All it does is require that you have the right doctor. Now my story from Canmore. <laughs> you may have heard of this story. It's Dr. Corey Adams. He's a heart surgeon. But he's also an avid hiker. And outside of Canmore and BC, of course, some beautiful mountains, many trails, and, and he's a Calgary um, a surgeon. And uh, he often goes and does hiking trails. And one day he was doing a hiking trail and the guy was hiking and overdid it and had a cardiac arrest right there on the trail. And people are yelling, along comes the doctor. Praise God, a doctor was in the house. And he's not only a doctor, not only does he know first aid, but he is a cardiac surgeon. And so he does CPR on this man, knows that, of course, very easily. That's no big task for a heart surgeon. But two days later, this man, of course, he's, they take him, he ends up in Calgary Hospital, and guess who his surgeon is? It's Dr. Corey Adams. The same guy that rescued him on the trail is the same guy that's, changed, that's taken the, doing a triple bypass for this man. And that's who Jesus is, friends. He's not only the heart surgeon, he's the guy that rescued us on the trail. When we were down, when we were dying, when nobody else knew what to do, Jesus was there at the right time in the right place. Praise be to God. Somebody say amen or I'll shout glory. Amen. Glory! I'm going to yell anyway. And not only does he do that, not only does he find you in the right place at the right time, not only, he's right there when you call on the name of the Lord, when you call on his name because your heart's given out, friends, because you can't take it no more, because the pressures of this world or the situations you're dealing with or whatever it is, your heart is heavy, your heart is heavy, friends, and you can't handle it anymore. He's there, right there, on the trail with you. Praise be to God. And then a little bit later on, he does a surgery of sanctification. He'll take the heart and he'll make it new, and you won't even have any problem. You won't even desire. He's our rescuer, and he's our healer. When Jesus found me, there was no pulse in me. I was down for the count, and I thought maybe I'd breathed the last breath, but praise God, he came and he pounded my chest. Hallelujah. He breathed the the Holy Spirit into me. And then after I was born again, I had the Holy Spirit of life in me. He was my rescuer and my healer and my sanctifier. Friends, the doctor is in the house. Whatever you need. And you say, well, and he's not just for you, friend. He's for all. Maybe the church needs to think a little better, more like the doctor that Jesus is. Maybe we should see our ministry as not being just inside the church, but our ministry is wherever the sick folk are. We need to bring Jesus to them, wherever they are, wherever they're at. He is the healer the rescuer, and the great sanctifier. If you're watching today or listening and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, 
If your heart is heavy with the things of this world, if you feel like you've got a million pounds upon your back, then give it to the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll come on the trail with you, and he will take that burden from you. He paid for it on the cross. He will rescue you. He will breathe new life into you. He'll do the Holy Ghost CPR. Hallelujah. And if you're a believer and you're struggling in some area, Jesus is still the great physician. He is still the one that can touch you and sanctify you. It's the same grace. It's the same grace. He'll sanctify and touch you. He'll minister to you. Just, you have to be honest with him. He'll always be honest with you. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the great rescuer, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being the one there for us. When we were on the trail, hallelujah, we thought there was no hope. Lord Jesus, you were there for us. And now, Lord Jesus, we come before you, Lord, because we have a condition that our father and our grandfather and our great-grandfathers and it's sin. And Lord, you dealt with sin on the cross. Lord, yes, when we were saved, you dealt with that. You gave us that hope of eternal life. But Lord, as we continue, if we continue to struggle in some area, the Lord, you're still there for us. You're still there to forgive us, to cleanse us, to cleanse us, to deliver us, to set us free, to minister to our heart. And even bring us to a place of sanctification and holiness. And so, Father, we ask you, God, today, whatever the need is amongst the people that are here, amongst the people that are watching, there is hope because there's a doctor in the house. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is number 200 in your red books. It's called On a Cross Crucified. And it may be on there, too. Do we have it? Healer?
and mercy. The great healer, the great physician, bless you with every spiritual blessing. Send you forth in the world to be healing hands to keep the preparation of the God. Go in peace.